Hi guys, it's Jasmine. Welcome to my channel. Today I will be talking about my most anticipated top 10 TBRs for 2021, which are to be read. Last year I read a total of 25 books. This year I'm challenging myself to read a total of 52, which is a little more than like double of it. Uh, so let's get started. I actually categorize these books into four different categories. The first one is classic literature, which means here is the first book. Book number one is called Crime and Punishment by Fyodor Dostoevsky. I might be pronouncing the name wrong, probably am. It's a murder story about, like obviously murder, from, but the point or the twist is that it's told from the murderer's perspective and it was published in 1866. It's one of the most well-known cat and mouse like tales between a killer and a detective. This has been on my top like must read list for a while now. It's a piece of classic dark literature with murder, which is my favorite type of books. And the like energy that it gives me reminds me of the picture of Dorian Gray because there's obviously going to be topics or uh, themes that relate to morality and what is the differentiation between right and wrong. So ready. And I think this might be my first read of 2021. The second book I have is Persuasion. These books aren't ranked in any specific order. It's just the way I like type them out on my list. This one is by Jane Austen. I have read most of Jane Austen's work and let's just say I'm a very, very big fan. I think she's brilliant, sarcastic, and very, very witty. This was actually her last fully completed novel and the book describes the plot as a story of a love that endures the test of time and society with humor, insight, and tenderness. I am not a romance person, but the only exception I will make to that is usually classics or if it is more like life and death rather than just classic, ro uh, not like classic, but like cheesy romance novels. Plus, look at the cover. I bought or I got this as a Christmas present in the vintage classic collection. So all of the covers and the insides match her entire collection of work, which I have on my bookshelf. The third book I have is The Beautiful and Dan by F. Scott Fitzgerald. It was first published in 1922 and it explores the story of a marriage in New York society and the American Eastern elite during the Jazz Age, right before and after the Great War, which is set in the early 1920s. I've obviously read The Great Gatsby from him and like everyone else on planet Earth, I think it's a great piece of literature, very well written, so I'm assuming he can't do too bad. Uh, I don't think it will be better than A Great Gatsby, I could be wrong, but I don't think it will be any worse than I can possibly imagine. I feel like this book is also often referenced in pop culture like in movies and shows and other books which is why I just want to know what the plot is and surprisingly no one's ever spoiled like this book so I have no idea like I'm going into this with an open mind but standards. The next category I have is nonfiction and I only have one book in this category because I don't actually have that many nonfiction books on my bookshelf anymore. Uh, like I said before, when I do read nonfiction, it's a very specific genre. So the book I bought was over, like I bought it over Christmas and I actually bought myself a copy and a copy for a friend. It's called Woman Don't Owe You Pretty. I'm not gonna lie, I saw this on Instagram for its stylized artwork and then like the color palette. And then I looked it up to see how great the content was. So like, let's do a little quick flip through. Look at the insides, like this little cheetah pattern. And then there's cute artwork with like quotes in certain pages and an amazing, very fitting color palette. And on the book it says, or like the back of the book, it says that this is the ultimate book for anyone who wants to challenge the outdated narratives supplied to us by the patriarchy. It will teach you how to protect your energy, tell you that you are the love of your own life, and that today is a wonderful day to dump them. On the bottom it actually says, warning containing explicit content and a load of uncomfortable truths. I like did a quick flip through of this book and I think that the writing style is definitely very easy to digest with like splash of humor so it's not just like statistics and facts it's a lot of like opinions and insight along with the like very like cute art that like can distract you for a little bit. I also think this is a great book for you to read throughout the year like in sections rather than try to like binge read it and if not it's a great coffee table book just to lay there like I love the design and everything about it. The next category is contemporary fiction which is 
this book first with book number five it's called supermarket and this book is by bobby hall which is who is also known as a grammy nominated artist logic i actually didn't know this was his book until after i bought it and i saw his little cute picture in the back and then everything clicked it makes sense like look at the color palette and like the style of font so what the book is described as it's a dark psychological thriller that involves sex, drugs, and money within a supermarket. Question mark? Um, on the back it says, Flynn is stuck, depressed, recently dumped, and living at his mom's house. The supermarket was supposed to change all that. An ordinary job and a steady check. Work isn't work when it's saving you from yourself, but things aren't quite the same from what they seem in the aisle. Arriving to work one day to a crime scene, Finn's world collapsed as the secrets of his tortured mind are revealed. I, I'm not like super familiar with him as an author. I know him as an artist. I'm not the biggest fan, but like I don't mind it. So I'm excited to see like his different style of talent. Book number six is Kafka on Shore by Haruki Murakami. And I'm not even sure if this is considered contemporary fiction because of its magic realism, but I didn't know where else to group it. So last time I read the book by this author, I said that his book felt pretentious and overrated for me, but I was willing to give him another try because I wasn't sure if it was just the plot or his writing style. And he's so admired and hyped up in like the book community. So what this book is about is... Here we go. It says, Here we meet a teenage boy, Kafka Tamura, who is on the run, and Nakata, an aging simpleton, who is drawn to Kafka for reasons that he cannot fathom. As their paths converge, acclaimed author Haruki Murakami enfolds reader in a world where cats talk, fish fall from the sky, and spirits slip out of their bodies to make love or commit murder in what is a truly remarkable journey. I am very... I wouldn't say the word excited. I just want to understand what the hype is about this author because I have major FOMO. I just want to know why everyone loves it so much. And maybe it's his beautiful writing style, but for me, like the last book was just such a disappointment that I have like a lower standard for this book. So it might just easily surpass that. The last category I have is fantasy fiction. These types of books are my favorite to pass time, get an escape from reality, and it's just so easy to read because the authors usually do a pretty decent job in dragging you or pulling you into the plot, the characters, and the whole world that they're involved in. So the first book up on the list is called Things in Jars. It's by Jess Kidd. And I definitely judge books by their cover and that's usually how I pick them, unless like I really love, love the plot. But like, come on, come on, it's so beautiful, I had to. It's about a female detective in Victorian London that has to solve a kidnapping about a girl with a peculiar supernatural power that caught the attention of collectors. I'm very interested in how the book will morph the idea of modern day, like, superpower feel into the old time streets of London just because like for me when I think superpowers I think like Marvel or um like DC Universe which is all very like modern day vibes but during the Victorian London era like is a writing style going to be more classic literature or like what even is Victorian era supernatural powers book number eight is Six of Crows by Leigh Bar Bardugo. Sorry if I'm butchering that name again. This book is actually book number one of a series and in the front it says six dangerous outcast one impossible heist. So I've seen this book all over the book community which is like booktube and book talk. Everyone loves the characters and like how like they work in unity to do this kind of like impossible mission and then they each characters are so different that you can like relate or like them which I am in desperate need of because ever since I finished the Shades of Magic series I haven't felt the same about or the same passion about any characters or who they are this is actually a YA fiction or I think it's considered YA it's definitely fantasy fiction but I don't know if it's like YA for, or adults which who cares I'm excited and I just want to feel something again. This is book number one, like I said, it's Six of Crows, and the second book is Crooked Kingdom. I don't have that copy yet, but if I'm really, really into this, I will definitely continue the series. 
Book number nine is Night Circus or The Night Circus by Aaron Morgenstern. It's a duel between two young magicians with high stakes that can only lead to one of them left standing. But of course, they fall in love and set off a series of dangerous consequences. I've always liked the idea and mysterious feel of fictional circus. Don't really like them in real life. They definitely freak me out and I'm not for animal abuse, obviously. So in fiction, it's much better. And it's like the whole like mystery, the dark, like twisted secrets usually hide within circus and then add some tension with life or death romance. Sign me up. The last book I have is Circe by Madeline Miller. It's actually a top voted book in 2019. And I ordered this version online from a UK website because I liked the cover more than the US cover. And on the back it says, Cersei's tale is a vivid epic of family rivalry, love and loss, the inextinguishable song of a woman burning bright and hot in the darkness of a man's world. So if you've heard from my Percy Jackson rants, you know I'm obsessed with Greek mythology. And then these are not the traditional like, or more like well-known Greek gods. It's like the stories of the Titans, which I do know most of the uh, like characters I guess you can say but I don't know them well enough which I'm very interested in learning about plus the cover that concludes my top 10 TBRs and I cannot wait to get through all of these books and I want to see if they live up to the hype or will they make it to my 2021 disappointment book list uh, thank you guys so much for watching if you have any like rec book recommendations comments about books or if you read some of these but no spoilers or if you have like any books you want me to talk about more leave them down in the comment section below but other than that see you guys next time